You may have already heard this, but scientists are trying to bring back the dodo. If you want to hear some positive news about how we're saving our planet and the animals on it, or you just want to hear about the history of the dodo and how scientists are trying to bring it back, then this is the video for you. So sit back, relax and enjoy. Colossal Biosciences is a company that has made it their mission to bring back extinct animals, and they've moved one step closer to their goal by raising £200 million last month in support of their project. So far they've said they want to bring back three different animals. They are the woolly mammoth, which I've already covered in a separate video, the thylacine, which would be an awesome animal to see in real life, and I can't get that finger up, but the dodo, which is what we're going to be covering in today's video. Before we talk about why and how Colossal want to bring back the dodo, I want to talk about some of the history of this weird little bird. In 1958, Dutch Vice Admiral Wiefrand van Werneck visited an island called Mauritius, which was found in the Indian Ocean, during the second Dutch expedition to Indonesia. It was the Vice Admiral and his crew that gave the first description of the mysterious bird that was native to the island. These birds are large and fat, they do not fly, and instead waddle clumsily on the ground. They have no fear of humans and can be easily approached. Their feathers are soft, their beaks are hooked, and their wings are small and useless for flight. They make a strange, low croaking sound and feed on fruit. This animal was a dodo, a large flightless bird that the Dutch nicknamed Valkvogel, which literally translates to disgusting bird, so I'm guessing it didn't taste the best. They weighed between 15 and 23 kilograms and they had grey and brown feathers. With no natural predators, dodos lived a long and peaceful life, reaching up to 30 years of age. It's not 100% clear how the dodo evolved, but the most widely accepted theory is that their ancestors, which were flying pigeons, island hopped to Mauritius from Southeast Asia. Once they arrived on the island, they realised there were no predators to kill and eat them, so they got kind of lazy, they stopped using their wings to fly, and then they adapted to life on the ground. Over time, their bodies got larger, which is basically just a nicer way of saying they got fat, um, their wings got smaller and they were now unable to fly, and their beaks changed shapes to adapt to the different types of foods available on the island. The lack of predation made them fearless, and as one of the Dutch sailors said, it was easy to approach them. This would ultimately be the dodo's downfall, when groups of scurvy infested ape men literally hopped off of their wooden ships, walked right up to the dodos, whacked them over the head with a wooden club, or just caught them with their bare hands and killed them. But arguably a bigger reason for the dodo's downfall would be the introduction of invasive species, and these species were animals like pigs, cats, dogs, goats, rats, and even monkeys, and they would have altered the habitat on the island, competed for resources, and even killed the dodos, and even eat their eggs, which the dodos only laid once a year anyway, so these dodos didn't really stand a chance. All of these contributions would mean that the dodo went extinct only 80 years after humans first set foot on the island. With the only accounts being sailors' stories, and with religion being very influential in the West at the time, many people believed that humans couldn't be responsible for destroying one of God's creations. So much so, that for hundreds of years after the dodo's disappearance, people believed it was no more than a mythological beast, the same as unicorns, fairies, and dragons. But in the 19th century, that all changed, when archaeological discoveries were actually examined and the dodo was proven to be a real animal. This also started the dodo's rise to fame, as a prime example of how humans impact ecosystems all around the world. So how and why are scientists trying to bring back the dodo? Let's start with the why. Before the arrival of humans, Mauritius was home to a wide range of unique animals and plant species, like the Mauritius blue pigeon or the Bois d'Antel tree, both of which are now extinct. Previously, 52 species of animals that were native to Mauritius were recorded, but now 24 of those are extinct, with the majority of the remaining species, like the Mauritius fruit bat or the Mauritius ornate day gecko, being endangered, 
threatened or critically endangered. 61 plant species native to Mauritius are now classified as extinct, with 89% of the remaining plant species that are unique to Mauritius being classified as threatened, endangered or critically endangered. It is evident to me and probably you that something needs to be done about the rapid decline of species living on Mauritius, and thankfully that's where the dodo comes in. The reintroduction of the dodo will help the ecosystem heal. I'm going to get this so wrong, but just, you know, give me a bit of slack here. I'm trying to pronounce this correctly. The Tamalabakoku, the Tambalakoku tree had a very close relationship with the dodo, uh, so much so that people literally nicknamed the tree the dodo tree. When the dodo lived on the island, the tree was booming, using the dodo as one of the main distributor of their seeds. But since the dodo has gone extinct for hundreds of years, the tree's numbers have been in decline, so much so that there are now only a few hundred remaining on the island. But reintroducing the dodo to the island probably won't solve all its problems, so that's why Colossal has teamed up with the Mauritius Wildlife Foundation to help other aspects of the island's ecosystem heal. They're helping to preserve and revive habitats, as well as help the endangered and threatened species that are living on the island. So I think we all should be in agreement that the first reason is good enough to bring back the dodo, but there is also another reason, and that is the advancement in technologies that will go on to help our people and the planet we live on. Advances in genetic engineering and embryology could help combat things like diseases and illness, it could help get rid of nasty things like cancer, it could help with IVF treatments which is important to a lot of people, it could also help discover new medicines, and even help conservation efforts all over the world helping to revive the world's ecosystems. And with pursuing goals like de-extinction, colossal biosciences are working towards advancements in these technologies. In fact, their advancements in genetic engineering has already helped discover a new bacteria called X32, which is a microbacteria that can help break down plastics, further showing the side benefits of pursuing de-extinction. I think that's a good few justifications for bringing back the dodo. So how are they going to do it? Firstly, scientists need to sequence the dodo's genome, which is basically just piecing together the dodo's DNA and seeing how it's built up. And this has already been done by extracting DNA from a dodo skull that was kept in the Natural History Museum in Denmark. And that's basically as far as they've gotten. Even though they've made great strides already, they're still in the very early stages, so I think it will be a good few years before we see a little dodo running along on the island of Mauritius. There's still a lot of steps that need to be completed before we see a little dodo hatching from its egg, and one of those is picking a suitable surrogate. So far, a chicken has been decided upon, but it's proven difficult to surrogate birds compared to mammals. So, to counter this, Colossal are going to try and gestate different birds inside chickens, maybe different types of pigeons, to help advance this technology so they can do it to the dodo without any problems. Another problem that Colossal faces is the lack of genome editing technology, but with the rapid advancement of this technology, I think it won't be a problem in the future. If you want a little more detail on how they're going to do this process, I'll leave a link in the description below. You can go on their website and read through it. They've obviously worded things a lot better than I can, so it probably makes a lot more sense to read it than to listen to whatever waffle I'm coming out with. And that's it for today's video. You know, it's quite crazy to think that in our lifetime we're going to see the return of the woolly mammoth, thylazine, and I can never get our finger up. The dodo. It's like Jurassic Park, it's literally science fiction, it's mad to think. What do you think about it? Do you think it's a good thing? Or do you think that there are some ethical questions that need to be raised? Um, yeah, leave them in the comments below, I'm definitely curious to see what you have to say. Obviously, if you enjoyed, leave a like. Um, if you have some hate, or if you have anything nice to say, put it in the comments below. Also, if you want to see my beautiful face again, and you want to learn some interesting facts about our planet's history, then make sure to subscribe, and hit the notification bell as well, so you get notified every time the channel uploads a new video. That's it from me, so stay safe, stay weird, and stay curious. Have a good one.